And welcome back to Jumping Flash. Now, you might notice something unusual about the sound in the background. Let me raise it for you momentarily. Apparently, I broke the sound, so... Now we're gonna have the wind chimes and space sound effects constantly playing over the music. I'm not sure how I did it. All I did was load the World 3 data. But, um... Let's just try and get through this. And it's not just there, it's going to play over pretty much everything from this point on. Not sure how exactly I broke the sound, but... Oh well. Now I do want to point out one thing. Uh, if you listen carefully to the music, there's one point where it sounds like sort of a Windows chime thing when a new window pops up. That's not what it is, it's just that uh, the xylophone sound effect uh, that they went with for this kind of sounds like that when it hits a certain pitch. And you'll notice that the chime sound effect is duplicating over itself. It's like bad mic spam. And you'll notice one other thing that I'm doing here that I wasn't doing before is triple jumping. You've actually, uh, you've actually been able to triple jump the entire time. It's just that in World 1 and 2, that was just to show you that the sound doesn't play when you pause. That's because in World 1 and 2, the levels were pretty compact, so it wasn't necessary to triple jump. But when you get to World 3 and on, the levels start to spread out a little bit more, and you have to do some more intricate jumping, so you'll pretty much need the triple jump from here on out. It's still possible to do it without it, but... That's just making it unnecessarily hard on yourself. And since I want to try and keep talking to drown out the chime sound effect, um, a little extra info about this game that uh, some people might not know is that uh, this is actually a copy of another game. Uh, Exact, which is the company that developed this, also developed a game called Geograph Seal, which was released on the, I think it was the Sharp X68000. It was like a home computer that was only in Japan. And if you look at pictures of it, it kind of looks like an early prototype of an Xbox 360. And you're probably wondering why I'm doing this. This is to show you the extent of the glitch. Not only does it play over all the levels, it also plays over the title screen. But going back to the level, uh, Geograph Seal plays, in gameplay terms, it's pretty much exactly like Jumping Flash, but it came out before it, so technically it's like Jumping Flash's older brother. And another thing I want to mention, since the sound is kind of glitched out and the music's a little hard to hear, is that uh, the guy who composed this music was a guy named uh, Takeo Miratsu, who uh, unfortunately died in 2006 from liver cancer. But he didn't work on the music for too many games. He mostly worked on uh, the Jumping Flash series, and you could hear the sound glitch getting worse for this bonus stage. Uh, but there were a couple other games he worked on, one of which was Legend of Dragoon. And he was also a member of Twin Amadeus, who composed some songs for uh, Beatmania 2DX. Just a little nice tidbit right there. And this is actually one of the easier bonus levels. Oh yes, the power pill. This is useless in the bonus stages, but it's just fun to go into rainbow seizure mode. Oh jeez, where's the other one? There it is. I have plenty of time now. Not too worried. Anyway, back to the actual level. And yes, we have to use the fans to get back to the mainland. If I remember correctly, I only have one jet pod left to find, and I cannot remember where that is. You can differentiate uh, the jet pods from everything else on the radar, but my colorblindness really does not help me with this. Oh jeez, it's getting worse. So anyway, uh, as for Exact, the company that developed this, I had a really hard time finding any info about them. They didn't develop that many games, 
Most of them were for the Sharp X68000 from before, but they did develop the Ghost in the Shell PlayStation game, which I did not see that coming. But um, you can see the exit at this castle right here, and the jet pod is actually behind it. Although I didn't realize that right away. And I'm not happy about this because it means that I wasted a bunch of time, which means my score bonus isn't going to be as high as it should. And getting to this is kind of similar to the way you access the bonus stage, except there's only one fan in an island instead of two. And you also notice that this glitch has caused some of the sound effects to be completely blocked out. <laughs> and it won't stop. I should not be laughing about this, but... I can't help it, it just came out of nowhere. See, even that doesn't play. Oh well, let's move on to 3-2. And this is where some of the jet parts... Uh, jet parts? Jet pods become a little more difficult to find. And something is shooting at me, and if you go behind this wall, you can find a firework. I know that's really not much of a secret, but if you wasted them before, it's good to know where some of these are. What we're going to do is jump on the tip of this birthday hat and look up. That's where one of the jet pods is. There are a few rainbow road style things like this that if you stand on them, you'll move. What we want to do to get all the power ups here and the jet pod is just jump very low to the ground and move backwards. And that's how you get all, all of these. Now we can just move to this adjacent island and start heading toward that blue whale. Which... I have stopped questioning why certain things are in this environment. And now we can go here and you'll see if you try to get on these the wrong way, you're not going to move anywhere. So, let's jump down here. And then we're going to start making our way up to the junction between these two rainbow roads using this ferris wheel. As you can see, it goes up fair distance. Oh! I really dodged the Hornet, because the jet pod is right in between these two, and we're going to head toward the other side of the island for the next jet pod, which, as you can see, is just sort of bouncing on this trampoline-style thing, which, if you hit it, you go really high up. Well, I guess compared to where we were before, it's not that high up, but... And these giraffes? If you stand a certain distance away from them, they'll start firing at you like turrets. But, so long as you're out of their range, they're completely harmless. And that allows us to get this jet pod, which now we can go straight to the exit, which is hovering in the middle of the island. And you'll see that that one giraffe respawned. Things do respawn quickly in this game. But, again, not much of a threat. Let's see if we can just jump straight over there. And we can. Now that's a time saver. No extra bonuses, but oh well. Moving on to the boss. Now this boss is a nice change of pace from the other two. Although at the same time, it's actually probably easier than the last boss we faced. For this boss, there are several rotating teacups around you. And the boss will spawn either his head, his arm, or, I don't know what else, but it shoots spikes, so that's never good. Now what you're seeing here is the easiest way to defeat this boss. You can stand in the middle and try and hit everything as it pops up, but that leaves you vulnerable to the ring things he shoots out of his mouth and to getting hit by either the spikes or the fist. What you can do is just jump on each of these teacups and wait for him to spawn which he never responds in the same teacup twice. But if you do hover over them like this, uh, it lowers the odds of him respawning there. So what you kind of want to do is fly away from it, sort of like I did, and then move in, bounce on it, and fire your guns as fast as you can. You don't even really need fireworks for this uh, boss stage. And you can just go from teacup to teacup, taking down whatever part of him shows up. Really, 
doesn't take much damage before these things get destroyed. Which just makes the boss fight even easier than it should be. And I've been hovering over this thing for a little too long, which is lowering the odds of it spawning. So, what I'm going to do is just... Where's that other teacup? There it is. Of course, now he's going to spawn from the other one because I left it. Yep, there he is. And he's gone. And this just adds insult to injury. What's supposed to happen is the whole clown genie thing will come out of the last teacup. Uh, arms, head, body, and all, and start attacking you. But if that does happen, you can use the exact same strategy and it'll work just as effectively. And look at the massive extra bonus that I got. Jesus Christ. Oh. And there's one other funny thing about this glitch. You want to see what it is? Well, take a good look at it. You're looking at it right now. The sound loops, and nothing loads. So I had to go back and do all of this shit again. Which was only a minor pain in the ass because these levels don't take too long to beat if you know what you're doing. But anyway, that's World 3. And now we get a slightly different cutscene going into World 4. So next time on Jumping Flash, we will venture into the world of... Ice, forests, and shipwrecks, which those are kind of conflicting. You know what? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to question it.